Mm. Hi, everybody. <laughs> nice to see you all again. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm Peter. Uh, for those who are new, I'll just be uh, hosting today. And uh, yeah, I love this series we have, uh, Another Self. We're into the third and the fourth episode. And um, yeah, so for those who are new, I'll just uh, let you know about the day. So we're going to start with the episodes uh, with David. And uh, then afterwards, we'll have a 10 minute break. And we have our breakout rooms where you can share any experiences you had and any emotions that came up through the episodes. And uh, then we'll have a 45 minute break. And then we'll have the Q&A session with me. So I'll pass it over to you now, David. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to deep healing <laughs> through relationships. <laughs> Isn't it great that we can go through spiritual awakening and deep healing, release of guilt and fear and pain and suffering using the mechanisms that the ego had made, except now the Holy Spirit is using them to undo our belief in them. So we're really learning how to heal here in the deepest way. I know over history, there's been a lot of theories about healing, and there's been a lot of uh, attempts at healing and attempts at forgiveness. But I feel so grateful we have uh, Jesus as a guide and the Holy Spirit connecting with us in our heart. And here, after many, many centuries of seeming time, we have A Course in Miracles, which is, is giving it to us straight. <laughs> it's basically saying, well, actually, healing is not a theory. <laughs> healing is what the Holy Spirit will inevitably do for the sleeping mind. So this isn't like a theory. You don't have to say, I hope it works. I wish that it works. You don't have to call the genie out of the genie bottle and say, here's my three wishes. Please help me be happy, peaceful, and loving. You can just say, oh, I've got some forgiveness work to do, and I need clear guidance. I need clear, strong guidance from the Holy Spirit and Jesus to release the belief in this world. So as you know, every week we... Uh, ask you to vote on themes for the movie workshop. And some of you also know that we're doing a four-part series of a Turkish uh, series called Another Self. It's really referring to the your higher self that's inside you, that's within your mind, the self of pure love and light and joy. And yet, the selves that we have believed in, we believe were personalities and bodies. And these are projections of the ego. It seems kind of radical to think that the body is not real. And Jesus knows that that's pretty radical for a sleeping mind. So he's saying, well, why not just think of the body as a symbol then? And maybe you can be open to the body just being a symbol of your mind awakening, where you start to let it give it a, give it a temporary uh, meaning of being a witness like an angel or a blessing. So you start to look around you and you see whatever bodies you still perceive, you see them as angels. Like you're surrounded by angels everywhere you look. And that's that's a, actually, it's not true in any real sense because you're actually the Christ. But <laughs> But in a temporary sense, isn't it better to look at people as angels that are just showing you what you believe? You know, if you watch the news and, and you see politician that you don't like, well, it's just showing you something that you believe in. If you see, uh, if you look back at history and you see a history of war, of dictators, of murderers, um, well, that's, that's the past. Uh, war and dictator and, and murder is, is basically goes back to the ego. God didn't create any of those things. But if you believe in the ego, then you perceive a historic uh, reference 
uh, that's there and it, and it seems to be filled with darkness. But Jesus says, well, it's just the past and your mind still believes in the past thoughts. But as soon as you forgive the past thoughts, the attack thoughts, then you'll see that everything is love and light. And you'll be so, so happy that you were mistaken <laughs> about this world. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I blasted and projected some darkness uh, here and there all over the cosmos. I'm, oops, I'll take it back now. I'll give it away. Oops, I made a mistake, but I'm still beautiful, beautiful. Oops, I made a mistake. I'm still beautiful indeed. <laughs> okay, well, here's here's our themes. Here's our themes. The first theme is the one you voted for by far the most is pray, be patient, and let the healing happen. Wow, 55 votes. No wonder you voted for that number one. Pray, be patient, and let the healing happen. Da, 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 da. Oops, and la da 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 da. <laughs> you see, it's kind of lighthearted. You're not focused on the mistake anymore. Whoops, and la da 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 We're doing some la da 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 today. We're going to have some fun. Number two, intellectualization versus following your heart. Hands down, I recommend follow your heart. Don't try to be an intellectual and pontificate on spiritual awakening. We learned that lesson 2,000 years ago when the scribes and the Pharisees, part of the Jewish hierarchy of, of high priests, were telling you, you, you can't do this, you can't do that, this is bad, this is worse, this is terrible, and don't do this, 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 or that. And then maybe, oy vey, maybe God will let you in. <laughs> and Jesus came along and said, oh no, You've been too focused. He was kind of basically talking to all the world, but he was specifically addressing Judaism and saying to the Judaism tradition, you've been too focused on the letter of the law. You know, you really are writing down and scribing the, the Ten Commandments, but you're not following the spirit of the Ten Commandments, which is just to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the first two commandments. You don't need eight more. If you love God and you love your neighbor, you can forget three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Who who needs ten? Who needs ten rules? If you can if you can live the first two, you got it. So Jesus focused on the spirit of the law, and he said he did not overcome to overturn the law. He just came to to demonstrate the law. You might say in action, because. He allowed the body to be body of Jesus or Yeshua to be used as a puppet by the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit could teach that our kingdom is not of this world. We have a loving creator, we have a spirit God, and we're all spirit, and that's our true nature. And none of us were ever bodies. In fact, if you go deep enough, you see that you you never ever came into a body. You were just hallucinating linear time, hallucinating a small self, hallucinating a personality self that doesn't exist because God didn't create it. The body's temporary. This flesh is here one day and gone. <laughs> and, and we call this death in the world, but Jesus says, no, believing in the ego, that's the death. That's why you need to forgive the ego part of your mind. The body is just an instrument, you know. You, you, the body is like uh, the body is like making up five senses and making up a hallucinated perception that seems to see through the body's eyes and hear through the body's ears and feel and taste and touch and touch and smell and all the five senses and the personality self are all part of the ego. So you might say. You have the ego made up artificial seeing that involves little eyeballs and irises. Here, I'm going to use some props here. Here is our, 
Here's our personality self here. It's just a little, it's looking around, it thinks it's see, oh, what happened? Ooh, 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 I don't like that. Ooh, mom, why, don't talk to me like that, mom, dad. You see, this is false seeing. The body and the, all the five senses will not bring you back to the creator because God didn't create the five senses. God is the creator of oneness. God is the creator of spirit. So when it comes down to intellectualization or following your heart, don't settle for, oh, I memorized the course, or I memorized the theory of the course, or I memorized the metaphysics. Don't even seek to just be a teacher of metaphysics. To teach is to demonstrate your state of mind is the teaching. When you're happy, the whole universe is happy. When you're joyful, the whole universe is joyful because it's a perceptual problem. And once you realize who you are, all you do is radiate happiness. That's it. That's God's love. There's no world. You don't have to try to use the world as, a, as an equation. You can actually let the world go. Workbook Lesson 128 says, the world I see holds nothing that I want. When you really can honestly say that there's nothing of this world that you want, you're home free. You're home free. It's over. The ego is down for the count, and it is out. Uh, when you don't want anything from the world, then the world won't seem to want anything from you. When you don't want anything from the world, pr pretty much you're just going to have butterflies fluttering around your head. You're just going to have flowers leaning over to you as you walk by so they can give you a little more of their fragrance and perfume. And the animals of the world are not going to try to kill you. They're going to sit down at your feet and purr. And they'll purr because they're so honored that you are the Christ. So it'll be more like a, a, Disney, a Disney scene. The animals will all come together and sing together because they're just going to reflect your own gentleness, your own peace, your own harmony. Number three of the themes, find the willingness to let go of grievances. All grievances are of the past. So if you want to let go of all your grievances at once, just realize that you cannot rely on the past for anything. I know there's a lot of people that say, you know, what is your spiritual tradition? Spirituality is of the present moment. There is no spiritual tradition. Don't get proud about Christianity. Don't get proud about Judaism. Don't get proud about Hinduism or Buddhism. Don't get proud about Advaita Vedanta. Don't get proud about non-dual pathways because everything that you perceive through the five senses, everything you think about from the past, everything that you're even proud about, proud about your family, proud about your country, proud about your neighborhood, proud about your accomplishments, nada, 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 nada. None of those things mean anything. What about being sentimental? What if you recall the past and you go, oh, those were the days, my friend, I wish they'd never end. No, don't get sentimental. There's nothing to get sentimental about because the present moment contains everything. It's the gateway to eternity. So you don't have to be proud about the past. You just have to forgive it. Uh, there was a a line, some of you who were here last week know that I uh, I put something on the screen and some of you were like looking closely. I'm going to do it again. This is from the course. This is from chapter three. And here it, here it goes. I'm going to put it up there so you can see. Can you all read that? Uh, Marina can help me for our Spanish friends. That's what it's saying. I'll read it again. This is, this is what Jesus is saying in chapter 3. The, quote, evil past has nothing to do with God. 
he did not create it and he does not maintain it. So some of you are raised Christian. Is anybody here raised Christian in Christianity? Okay. In Christianity, there was a book called the Bible. Has anybody heard of the Bible? Okay. All right. Now, in the Bible, what's the first book of the Bible? Genesis. And Genesis teaches us God created the heavens and the earth. No, that's incomplete. The first book of the Bible has got an error in it in the sense that God created the heavens. We're not talking about planets or spheres or celestial. We're talking about pure spirit, love, and oneness. God created heaven, period. And Christ is a creation of God in heaven. Jesus the man was just a puppet pointing us toward the Christ, our, our natural state of mind. And so were all the puppets, the mystics and saints. Did Jesus really exist? Not in reality, because he was a it was a form that the ego had made, and the Holy Spirit used the puppet to demonstrate eternal love. But you can't reconcile form and eternal life because form is just a symbol and the ego is just, it made the symbols of cosmos and now the Holy Spirit is using them for us to let go of the belief in the cosmos and time. So again, that's why we don't want to intellectualize because even if you look at the Bible and you say, well, it's actually a little incomplete. The Course is teaching us that God is eternal and God creates in spirit only. God does knows not form. Olet, you're here. Olet and I talked about this recently. That's right. God knows not form. Hallelujah. Now, is Christianity the only theology that has mistakes? No, no. There's actually non-dual teachings that teaches that God was bored. And God decided to create form to make it a little more interesting. <laughs> no, sorry to say that even the non-dual teachings that tried to say God was bored or God was all alone and he wanted companionship. No, I'm sorry. God is not bored. The creator is not bored and the creator is not lonely either. And, and when you try to tie God into this world of time and space, it's an error because God doesn't even know of it. Remember, the evil past has nothing to do with God. He did not create it and he does not maintain it. So we're starting to loosen our mind from the belief that God is to blame for something. And I do know a lot of, a lot of my atheist friends, they have told me that the reason they're atheists and the reason they're so angry at God is they're saying, how could God do this to us? But God didn't do this to anybody. <laughs> God is pure love, pure spirit. And we're learning to wake up from the dream of bodies, from the dream of linear time, and remember our beautiful creator, who, who is pure spirit. Okay, the next one. Use, use, uh, using expression to release projection. So what I've said is, instead of bottling it up, Instead of stuffing it down, instead of repressing your hurts, your judgments, and your grievances, take them to the Holy Spirit. Give them to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will take them away. Bring your grievances, your anger, your hurt, your pain to the Holy Spirit and, and watch it disappear. If you're too afraid to take it to the Holy Spirit, talk to a close friend who won't judge you. <laughs> Just talk to somebody. Talk to your cat, talk to your dog, talk to the birds outside the window, express it, but express it with the desire to let it go. Don't hold on to it because when we hold on to the past, we hold on to grievances and that doesn't feel good. Grievances never feel good. Even the workbook lesson of A Course in Miracles says, my grievances hide the light of the world in me. So in me is the light of the world, but if I hold grievances, I won't know it. I'm just going to be holding on to the past. Because all of the past is a grievance. I know sometimes we're tempted to think, wait a minute, I have good memories too. 
And Jesus says, well, the good memories are shadows of the light and the bad memories are dark shadows. <laughs> so you may think you just want to release the dark shadows and you want to keep the light shadows. But let me tell you, you don't want shadows at all. If you, if you know this light, you're going to wonder how you could have ever found value in shadows because shadow figures block the light and you want to release them all. And the last one is let go of denial and protectionism. Denial is something, um, Helen Shuckman one time saw this blazing light in a vision and the letters said, never underestimate the power of denial. In other words, you have a powerful mind, but if you deny your own God-given power, if you deny the power of, of thoughts, if you deny the power of your identity, your true identity, then you won't know God because God gave you all power in spirit, not as human being. God doesn't know bodies, so God could not grant power to bodies because God doesn't know of bodies at all. They don't even exist. Even the saints and the mystics, you know, we can think about all the saints and mystics, but those are just symbolic representations of the light in our mind. So when Jesus speaks to you, or Mary Magdala speaks to you, or Ramana Maharshi speaks to you, or Paramahansa Yoga, Yogananda speak to you, these are just symbols in your mind that are representing through words and comfort the peace of God that you are. That's all they are. We don't need to make idols out of any people because they're just reminders of who we are. So we don't have to make idols of people. We don't have to say some are avatars and some are saints and some are mystics. And those are just symbols of just reminding us how loved we are in, in God, in God's mind, in God's spirit. So Today, we continue on with another self. And what we're looking at when we look at this amazing series from Turkey is we're viewing the relationship issues and we're worrying the, we're watching the, the seeming dramas that are arising between husbands and wives, between mothers and daughters or fathers and sons and fathers, daughters, so on and so forth. We're looking at three women who, who have known each other for years in Istanbul, and now they're on this deep spiritual journey. Uh, if you missed the first two sessions, I'll just tell you that one of the women's name is, is Sergi and or Sevgi. Sevgi is uh, She's a, an attorney who basically was diagnosed with cancer, and now she's learning to release the grievances that she's held in her mind about the past, about um, her perception of her father being murdered when she was a little girl. And now she's been kind of like a, a substitute for her mother. Uh, her mother... Uh, Muko is, is very protective of Sevgi, and in some sense, Sevgi has seemed to, to turn her life into be a replacement partner for her mother, since um, her she has a perception her father was murdered when she was very young, and, and her mother never got over it, so she's, she's trying to play two roles, the daughter role and the husband role for her mother. What's the word we have for this? Codependency. This is sick. This is sick. <laughs> when you try to take on roles to make up for other people's perceived lacks, trying to play the perfect daughter or the perfect son, trying to play a, a substitute for somebody who's been, who's died or who's been murdered or something. This is what Jesus calls substitution. 
And ego is very good at substitution. It always is substituting one role for the next. And in the end, you have to take on the one role that will set your mind free, which is forgiveness. But this is not a personal role. When you forgive the world, you're taking on the part that was assigned to you to release this world. Now, what does this mean in terms of our main characters? Well, we can see that Sevgi is not the only one who's playing this substitute role with Muko, her, her, her mother. Um, we can see that Ada has been playing the role of the wife, but she, Ada has really extreme anger issues at men. And in this episode that I'm going to for you next, episode three, you're going to get a little bit of a glimpse about what happened in the ancient past back in 1917, World War I. There was some events that happened and this is all part of Ada's specific heritage, genetic heritage. Something's going to happen to her aunt. And it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. And whenever we look back at the past, if we could look at all the past that the ego has generated, we would see there's, there's according to the ego, there's murder, betrayal, there's pain, there's abandonment, there's rejection, there's all kinds of denial, and there's all kinds of substitution that's going on. Now I know, I can look at you all right now, I can see your faces, and I know that we've all gone through some of those similar things, those same emotions in our experiences with, with the people in our lives because the past just repeats. In India, they would call this karma. This is just the past repeating itself over and over and over. And the point of karma is to forgive it or release it so that you can enter again into the remembrance of eternal life. And you want to come to an end of karma. No one who understands anything about karma wants to keep it. You want to, you want to drop it. <laughs> you want to release it. Uh, I think the one that really, really got it, when I was a teenager, and then I was in my early 20s, I used to follow the Beatles, and then I followed John Lennon and George Harrison and McCartney and, and Ringo. But one time, that's right, John Lennon and Oko, Yoko Ono released a song called Instant Karma. There you go. If you're going to have karma, why not have instant karma? <laughs> why not face it all in this moment? Why not release it all in this moment? Because the present moment is just being used by the ego to hold on to the past. And the present moment is the only time you can release the ego. You can't release the ego in the future because there is no future. <laughs> you can't, you can't, definitely can't release the ego in the past because the ego is the past. <laughs> but the present moment offers the great escape to wake up to eternal, eternal life, to wake up in God. Now, we're going to see um, that Ada, who has a lot of anger at men, seemingly, she's, she's, can be quite upset with her husband, Salim, sometimes. She can be upset with her old boyfriend, Toprak. She can be upset with uh, the guru, even the guru, the healer in this series, Zaman. Yes, Ada can get very, very upset with Zaman as well. But Zaman is just saying that the people in our lives and the people we remember, and even the people we don't remember that are that are in this unconscious mind, they're all there to be raised up to the light so that we can release them. That's all people are for. That's all past memories are for, is to be released. There's nothing to be sentimental about. Sometimes I find now I've been working with the course for like 
decades. And now sometimes I even meet Course in Miracles students and now they're starting to tell me their Course in Miracles war stories. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you don't know, David, how bad it was back 20 years ago when I had the course, I was betrayed by my Course in Miracles teacher and betrayed by my fellow Course in Miracles students. And I'm like, oh my God, now the ego is using the course <laughs> to tell war stories because <laughs> it's been around, you know, since uh, 1976. So now the Course in Miracles war stories are coming in. Listen, don't have any pride with the course. It's just a symbol that your mind is using, the Holy Spirit's using to set you free from the past. Don't, don't be a proud Course in Miracles student who hits other people over the head with a Course in Miracles metaphysics. Please don't do that. That's, that's just the ego using the Course now to try to be right about metaphysics or right about, about, about theory or something, right about the mind. We have to let go of pride and we have to realize that all pride is the past. If you if you look out at a tree, you know, you have to just say, okay, tree, I forgive you. Leaf, I forgive you. I have done this thing. I made up leaves with the ego, but now I'm going to let go of the leaf. And I'm going to see you as the Christ. I'm going to see the Christ light behind you, Mr. Leaf, Mrs. Leaf whatever, I'm going to let go of all my thoughts of leaves. We have to let go of the leaves of the tree. And please don't look back to the past and don't start to make idols of Course in Miracles students and teachers. Remember, we're the Christ, we're the same one. How can we have special people in the past that knew more than other people? Don't put people onto pedestals. The next time you find yourself praising a person, just thank them in your heart for showing you something that you needed to see so you could let go of it all and see that you're the Christ. We don't want to make idols of, that, of anything in this world. And, and this is so important. If we're going to really be free in the present moment and open to the light, we just have to say bye-bye to the idols. No more. Uh, even the Bible says, hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. Okay, that's good. That's a good line from the Bible. We'll take that. Hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. Now, in this episode, we're going to start off seeing a flash from the past. And this flash from the past is going to be Ada's aunt, Zara. Uh, this is Ada's aunt. I don't think Ada ever got to meet this aunt because this aunt was, um, we're going to see, she's going to be, uh, go through some intense experiences and then she's going to be murdered. And this is all taking place back in the Aegean Sea between Turkey and Greece in World War I. So we're going all the way back to World War I. And this is going to be a past flashback. But when we still are holding on to an anger at men, it could be this, uh, it could be her, her great uncle murdering her great aunt, which is what the case is from a genealogical perspective. But remember, Jesus is saying that the past itself is what the murder is. It's, and it's gone. It's already been healed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has healed the past. So we don't have to try to figure out personally how to forgive. It's already been done by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit overlooked the error and saw the light of truth, saw the innocence of, of our true identity. And yet, whenever we recall seemingly past mistakes of past generations, all the, the betrayal, the murder, the rejection, um, you know, if we look back at World War I scenes, for example, like they're going to show uh, at the beginning of this episode, that of course we need to forgive it. The ego just keeps repeating the same error, separation, as if it's happening still, and that's what linear time is. But what Jesus is telling us is, is the history would not exist 
Jesus says in um, chapter four of the course, the past does not matter and history would not exist if the same errors were not being repeated in the present. So in that one line, Jesus is saying, the present moment is your point of power. This moment offers you the power of releasing the past, releasing all grievances that seem to be played out over many generations. Right now, your mind is going to, to say to the ego, the buck stops here. I am not going to continue believing in you and, and believing the grievances of the past. Whatever I thought went wrong, I'm going to say now, I have done this thing and it is this that I would undo. It is this that I would forgive right now. I will not give my precious mind over to repeating this error. I will release it. And this is what this series, I think, is truly about. Because on the surface of things, it's, it's quite dramatic. On the surface of things, you see conflicts between people. You see conflicts between mothers and daughters. You see, you see conflict between partners, husbands and wives, between romantic partners. You see a conflict between a child, Sarp, and, and his mother, uh, Layla. You, you see all the projected conflicts but those projections are all just coming from the mind. And the only way you can heal it is to forgive the ego in your mind. The ego, belief in separation, is the one grievance. But that one grievance will be repeated over and over and seem to generate what we call linear time until you say, that's enough. I'm going to remember God. I'm going to remember heaven, nirvana. So sit back, enjoy the soap opera today. I hope I, I get to watch soap operas with everybody around the world. And I'll pop in from time to time with a little bit of commentary as we move through this uh, Turkish soap opera. So enjoy, enjoy it.